Well, hello everyone. I have Tammy Mack here. Thank you so much, Tammy, for coming on. I am really excited to get to know you. I've been watching you for a while and appreciating uh, all the th work and posts that you do on Instagram and uh, very, very creative and uh, sometimes very humorous, which I enjoy a lot. I think we don't laugh enough in our, our society. So I just enjoy uh, your podcast. They're, they're entertaining and informative. So welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm so happy to meet you finally. There's so many people that are new, um, you know, to what we're doing right now. And as leaders, which is who we are, it's it's so amazing to be able to see you as a collaborator, as a as a person of who you are, instead of competition, which is is so new, so unique to the era that we're in now, and excites me so much. That's so awesome. I do think it, in terms of how important this work is and that we're all kind of in it together and we're really trying to uh, uh, bring people back to themselves, help them return to who they really are. And that is a service that does uh, a, a, has great impact in regards to our, the collective, our world. So we're all doing this together and we're all on the same team and it's a beautiful thing. Now you're a, uh, what we call in human design a projector. There's two types, or I'm sorry, five types. There's the manifestor projector, manifesting generator, generator and reflector. And three of those types are non-sacral types. And you happen to be a projector, correct? I am a 6-2 splenic projector. Okay. Yes. And so um, actually, if you don't mind, I'll just show my chart real quick. Please so do. Oh I only have two centers defined, my spleen and my will, which has been such a beautiful gift um, with my openness, because it's allowed me to stay healthy and stay attuned to my own source of wisdom through my intuition of my spleen, and allows me to be self-empowered through my will center um, during my deconditioning process. That's amazing. That's You have a lot of openness, and as a projector, you're here really to be a guide. That's what, you, what you've come for. And projectors in general, you, I like the way you put it. You, you said that the projector uh, provides the torch for individuality. Can you, can you kind of uh, go into that a little bit? Absolutely. Um, you know, the projector is the most conditioned energy type that there is because we take in energy and we clear energy within our within our aura, within our bodies, and we amplify it back out. That is what we do. So we're very, um, very penetrating into other people's energy, which, you know, is so beneficial because we're really scrubbing the planet clean um, just by being. But there's not enough projectors that are aware yet that that is our sacred role is to help ourselves and others through the de deconditioning process and through cleaning up the karma that that we're all you know um, involved in and we're all evolving through and so as a projector, we have this sacred role, which is very close to the manifestor role. I, I, I have to say the manifestors were the old kings and the queens and they were the ordained, right? The, you know, God spoke through them and they spoke to many, many people, right? They were one to many and they created these, they always had uh, boundaries in their aura and they manifested them through armies, through, um, you know, different kind of boundaries that you see in, in, in uh, royalty and in castles and stuff like that. Projectors are a little bit different, where we are carrying the torch of the manifestors, but instead of one to many, we are here to be one to our tribe, to our people, mm -hmm. and work very intimately with our people, as opposed to the old, you know, kings and queens that had that barrier and what they said was you know what went right where the projectors kind of have this dance with the generators which is very very different yes it definitely is that's really really interesting um so the role of the manifestor has definitely changed and the projector has moved into this position of kind of bringing connection and and light um to the world and like you said kind of cleansing um the karma 
Um, what do you, when you think of manifestors, which I am, by the way, I'm a three, five manifestor. I'm an ego manifestor, which means that my will is my authority. Um, what, how do you see manifestors today? What is their role in your, in your opinion? Yeah, their role has changed. Obviously, um, when we have introduced the nine centered being, uh, we became sovereign beings, although we always were sovereign beings, we just didn't have that awareness. Right. Now that we have that awareness, we understand that we're all you know, ordained in our own way, right? We all have the ability to tap into our source, whether it's God, whether it's universe, whatever that is, but we have that ability now to do it within ourselves. And so the manifestors have, they still have this initiating role, but it's deep within them now that they're creating impact in the world of others but it's not on a uh, I am the boss I am the queen I am you know you listen to me type way but it really is starting to understand how to work with others how to delegate and how to understand that is no longer a hierarchy that the kings and the queens um, used to operate out of now you say that you're a three five and in my feminine language I call her the medicine woman of the line three and the queen of the line five because of the projection field mm -hmm. so as a beautiful yeah I see my role now I, I guess um to initiate people on a journey in returning to who they are as opposed to just telling them what to do <laughs> absolutely absolutely it's connecting you know as and we're both will we both have a defined will center mm -hmm. so we are plugged in to our own source of empowerment right our our we're solar powered right we're, we're yes. connected to our soul and we're solar powered and the role of an ego um, defined, anybody with ego defined, is to be so self-empowered that we inspire, we influence, we help other people see what is possible when you have this self-empowerment, when you believe in yourself so much, when you're connected to yourself so much that you no longer need outside circumstances to rule you anymore. Yes, yes, I feel that very deeply. I feel I, that was the journey that I went on and I know that it's the true journey. It's the hero's journey. It's the journey to the center of who you are uh, into uh, the divine that's within you. And that's definitely my goal now as a manifester is to <laughs> really uh, uh, not point think, people to external things, but the internal and it's powerful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it is so important to, as I say, fill up on yourself first, especially as non-sacral beings. Mm -hmm. um, we have, we, we don't dance with life the same way that generators manifest right. generators do, right? They, they have this biofeedback of dancing and, and the sacred yes and no, and connecting to the universe on an out, on an, an outer circumstances and outer, you know, Over where, yeah. Yes, we're, we're non-sacral beings, it comes through us. We have to be so lit up within us in order to act. And that's why rest is so, so vital for non-sacral beings because it takes a lot of energy for this energy to move through us and for us to be able to do the work that we're here to do. Yes, it does. Uh, burnout's a big theme with projectors manifestors and reflectors as they are all non-sacral beings. So they don't have sustainable energy uh, like the generators and the manifesting generators. Is that something that you've experienced in your life? <laughs> Is that, a, is that a funny question? That's a funny question. It, it, you know, it's so funny because uh, I am an athlete. Um, I, but uh, my first burnout was at 20 years old. Oh, which which may seem you know quite young but um i was you know trying to prove myself all my life mm -hmm. and so i remember in my early 20s going through my first burnout and not being able to move off the couch whatsoever um and then i moved to the mountains and i 
I started an entirely new life. Mm. Um, and then I had my second burnout at about 35 years old, where I ended up getting shoulder surgery from work and um, went through this huge, huge um, healing process of old PTSD that I didn't even realize that I had. And then my last burnout was around 40 years old. And this was uh, about 40, 42 years old just recently. And this is actually when I found human design or human design actually found me yeah. during my, um, I was, I was uh, training as a shaman and, and I was doing the uh, Starkeeper right. Mm -hmm. And about a week later after I did the Starkeeper right, human design found me. Mm -hmm. And so I have experienced burnout. Now I say that I'm an athlete because it wasn't actually the physical work necessarily that was burning me out, but it was the mental. Mm -hmm. And we don't talk about this enough, I think, um, in the community. When we think about burnout, we always think about our vitality through our, you know, through movement. But I think a lot. I think <laughs> a lot of the burnout actually happens in the mind and, and being on this hamster race of, of our thoughts and our beliefs and our mindsets and what we're, you know, not fitting in and our self doubt and worry mm -hmm. really creates a lot of um, energy depletion that we're not necessarily aware of. So mm -hmm. as a projector, you know, they always say, or we're always said, um, we don't have the energy to do the same things that generators do. Mm -hmm. However, um, I believe that if it lights you up, you have the energy to do it. Yes. If it, yeah. And then that's why for me, exercise is so important because it's my way of getting into my body and feeling good in my body instead of always being in my head. Yes. I think you're, you're really onto something and you're correct. That's not talked about enough in human design, um, that it's not so much the physical as it is the mental. And that, of course, I think that a lot of that goes back to our conditioning. I mean, I was a condition generator. I worked very, very hard for a lot of years and ended up, you know, burning out and having physical issues as a result, um, not honoring uh, my the signals that my body would give me. You know, it's time to to put this down. I'm pretty I'm open everywhere except for my um, my G and my will and my throat. That's it. So I have that open route as well. So putting stuff down and you do as well. So putting stuff down and stopping, um, whereas a generator or a manifesting generator can kind of just power it through and keep going. If it's, you know, we do have to honor our rest cycles, but physical activity, I think is a very good thing when it's done from uh, the perspective of something that really gives you pleasure and helps you come out of your head. Cause that's the mind is that's, that's where it's at. Well, and you think about it, the mind, you know, is light, it's mm -hmm. electric, and it burns out your nervous system, right? Yes. So connecting to your inner child, but it burns out your nervous system. Mm -hmm. And this is where, you know, stress and adrenaline and all our, and many of our stress issues come from. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily moving, but it's it's what's moving through us and what's burning us out. What's, you know, that lightning all the time, never turning off is really what um, can be such an energetic depletion. Mm -hmm. Now, as a non sacral being, we get to be wise about energy efficiency. And that's, you know, as a, one of the roles as a projector is to help generators through energetic efficiency, right? Like, <laughs> like I see a light bulb right now, an right. energetic, uh, <laughs> um, efficient light bulb, because we understand um, energy so much. And as a projector, we love systems, we mm -hmm. understand systems. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we love and understand systems so much is because then we can see where blockages are, where energy is not moving, and being able to see a system allows us to understand even more how to serve, how to guide, how to be a leader um, with others. Yes. And amplification plays a big role in that as well. And that's um, when you amplify something, it's coming from outside of you and you make it bigger in a sense, you turn it up, you turn the volume up and uh, in, in projectors are very open. So when they're around uh, sacral beings who have a ton of energy, we can, we can amplify that energy and also burn ourselves out. Would you say, do you notice that when you're, do you notice when you feel like you're amplifying energies outside of yourself or bringing them in and amplifying them? 
Um, I absolutely do. So I actually work in mental health and addictions at the hospital. Wow. Okay. I, I don't do it full time. Um, I do. I, ha I have to make sure that my cup is full before I go into the work there, um, which is so fascinating, right? It is, it is such an honor to be able to hold space for those that are, um, degen you know, like the society calls them degenerates or, you right. know, like they're not loved by society and they're not loved by themselves. Yes. And so I do find that by the end of the day, for instance, when I'm working at a place like that, my triggers show up, my addictions show up. And this is how I know that, okay, I am done. And this is how I know working in healthcare that it doesn't serve me because if I'm constantly energy working, plus I'm physically working and, and healthcare is very physical, um, I was burning um, the candle at both ends and it, and, you know, it was always burning me out, um, whether it was in my body through, you know, shoulder or whether it was through not being able to sleep at night because I was so stressed and then knowing I had to be at work, at, you know, seven o'clock in the morning. So, um, yeah, definitely. It's, I definitely find, especially with manifesting generators that I can't be around them so much because I pick up on multitasking. I pick up on wanting to do all of the things because I'm open and yeah. with an open G center, I can, you know, I, I like want to be everything at all, you know, all the time. Yes. Um, that was the biggest lesson I have to say was my open G center for sure the identification of who I am. Oh boy. Yeah. That, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Um, it's definitely once you start to become aware of that, I think it really, when it, there's awareness, um, in the body, you can do really differentiate what it is to be in your own aura and in the aura of, uh, of another. And, um, it, but that's a, that's a skill and it takes time. It's not easy. It's not. And I, and I really wish that, uh, more people, uh, would bring this uh, wisdom to young children, especially non-sacral children, because um, it's very, it can be very difficult to manage. It can be difficult to know what's you and what's not you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, 50% of the population um, have an open um, solar plexus or um, emotional solar plexus yes. and really being a parent myself, I'm a single parent of a 16 year old, um, what, being able to understand you know, his different developmental cycles. Mm. So zero to seven of his root chakra and, and then seven to 14 of his emotional solar plexus. And then now, you know, the teenager mental <laughs> process that he's moving through right now um, and being able to have awareness, hold space for that, understand that, you know, our children are going through their own cycles. They're, and, and, while we are clearing the karma, they are creating new karma in their lives and, and, and moving through that as well, which is very different from what we understood or what we knew of um, at their time. And so it's really fascinating um, as a parent and as somebody who works in mental health, seeing the different uh, developmental um, issues that come up in children. That's very, that's, you're really, I'm, I'm on a gene keys guide and, and I, Oh yes. In the thick of teaching or not teaching, we don't use that word guiding um, the Venus sequence and really tapping into those different developmental stages. And you're, you're speaking a language that I really understand. I call it the, I actually guide. I have a, a course that I guide people through it as well. And I actually call it the conditioning field. Yes. And so I did change it up a little bit from the way that Richard teaches it, where I actually teach it through the chakra system as opposed to his system. Oh. Um, and that way it's a little bit more easy for me anyway, to teach and to understand using human design, gene keys and shamanism and, and all the other different no doubt. Um, aspects that I love to share. Mm, that's really beautiful. So you really integrate quite a lot. You bring a lot to the table. Every time I learn something, I instantly uh, integrate it because 
part of it is the line two of who I am to nerd out. And part of it is the line six of, of who I am as it, I want to be able to share this and teach this. Mm -hmm. So whenever I learn something, I integrate it into my own language and my own understanding to give it a different twist and to be able to share it in a more grounded and easy way to understand. And that's what I really hope um, is that when, when people work with me, that they really get a grounded, uh, you know, understanding of it instead of it always being, you know, outside of us. That's really brilliant, Tammy. I mean, to me, that's a testament to the projector's ability to really be able to read others. Uh, you have a real good idea of what, of the, the method, method by which they will learn the best. And they will pick it up. I, I feel as a manifester, sometimes I miss that. I'm, and I, I admire that. I think that's, that's very, very brilliant. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, you know, in the sidereal, I'm actually a manifester. Oh, okay. and, and when I do my soul level work, I actually work as a manifester. And so I'm able to, in my own being, um, really understand and feel the different multidimensional that we all are. And mm -hmm. when I'm working in the collective consciousness, then I'm a projector. And when I'm working on a, um, a, a bigger, uh, you know, in, in within myself, I become a manifester in my own process. It's so interesting. And Sidero, I'm a projector. So. Ah! <laughs> So oh, it's it and my channels are all projected. So I, mm. I feel like I've had to, I don't know, I feel like a half manifester sometimes. Like I can, I kind of have to have some sort of an invitation before I initiate. <laughs> it's really so much more um, you know, detailed and everybody's so unique. I mean, I I look at other, I very rarely see a chart that looks like any other person's chart. And yeah, it, yeah, and it's so amazing when we're able to look at a chart and see past the chart. Um, when we can see their soul journey, when we can see their past lives, when we can see the multi-dimensional being that they are. Um, when I read a chart now, it's kind of like reading the matrix to me because I can get different levels of who they are um, through their chart, but also through their astrology, through what they're speaking, you know, the, listening to their language allows me to understand them on a different level. Mm -hmm. um, and as a channel, um, which I am, I, I truly believe that the reason why I've been guided to so many different modalities and so many different teachers was that it was giving me a language in order to be able to channel information in on multiple different layers. And yeah. so if I didn't, you know, if I didn't have the calling of of continuously learning and understanding and integrating, I wouldn't have the language to use to be able to to share it. That's beautiful. I, I, when I think of, when I first discovered human design a number of years ago, I thought it of, of it in terms of mechanics. Like you can, you can look at a car, you can open the hood, you can look at the engine, you can poke around in the interior, you can open the trunk and you, but you don't understand that vehicle until it's out on the road and you're actually driving it. And they're all going to drive just a little bit different. They're all going to have their quirks and their strengths and and that's human beings. I mean, we're just much more uh, complicated and detailed than uh, the systems that we have that try to, um, you know, come to terms with that or explain that. And I love that you bring shamanism into the equation. Well, you know, it's so interesting that um, I actually studied a lot of the human design systems before I found human design. So as I said, I studied shamanism, I studied Qigong, I studied um, energy medicine, I, I'm a Reiki master, right? You know, all of the different energy systems. So when human design found me, it was like, it was like a coming home. It was an integration of everything that I've already learned and understood. And so I was able to, when I, when I studied with Karen Curry Parker and quantum human design, um, fully integrate it so much faster and, and fully understand it um, because I studied 
through the I Ching system. I studied um, different streams of consciousness and, you know, and all of the different things. So it just kind of clicked into place. Mm -hmm. And um, it was super, super fascinating how it just all evolved into one system. Um, I I, can I tell a story real quick? Yes. Um, I also study from Carolyn Miss. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, I, I truly, I had a channeling uh, recently that told me that Ra wasn't the only, the only being that downloaded this during the supernova, right? Mm -hmm. When we, it, because it comes into the collective consciousness, we mm -hmm. all have the ability to receive the same ideas that everyone else has. But the way that it manifests is through your system, through your understanding, through your language. Yeah. So I truly believe that Carolyn Miss um, downloaded the same information because her work is very deeply connected to archetypes, very deeply connected to the chakra system, very deeply connected to astrology. Mm -hmm. And so integrating her work into human design as well has been so fascinating um, through, you know, soul contract and, and who we are to experience through our soul contract whether you call it human design or your soul purpose or your life purpose or however it is that you want to connect to your your you, the reason why you incarnated here at this time mm. oh that's just beautiful yes I love her work and I love Carl Jung's work I see a lot of mm. I see a lot of that in his work as well um yeah I I was telling someone the other day it's like I love I love human design and I love gene keys I love all these different modalities, but the universe can communicate with all of us in any way it chooses and in a way that we understand. And there's a multitude of different channels. I think everything's channeled. And that's just, I, I love that you love her work because I, that was, I'm a, um, I'm a neuromuscular therapist and massage therapist, um, but I'm very connected with the understanding that our bodies or our bodies are directly impacted by the soul by what's going on in the interior as opposed to everything coming you know from the exterior and um it's all it's all connected and and there's just it, it truly is it, it truly is and everything that's outside of us is actually inside of us that was a channeling that i i got that you there's an aspect of you within me right yeah. there's an aspect of everything mm -hmm. and and we tend to highlight the good and not recognize that, well, if you're in me, well, then so is Hitler. So right. is, you know, everything, yes. everything outside of us is like a cell within us. Yeah. And um, through chat, so even when I channel, I no longer say I channel something from outside of me, but mm -hmm. it's in my internal guidance mm -hmm. um, system cool. that guides me. And, and so if I channel um, Mother Mary, she's a cell within me that I have activated and created a relationship with. Um, with you, you know, there there was an aspect within myself that was calling out a relationship with you, and vice versa. And this is how we created it because we are the creatrix of our matrix. Gosh, that's beautiful, Tammy. That is beautiful. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I like Charles Eisenstein too. He talks a lot about the story of separation that we've mm -hmm. created and that there is none and every person is an aspect of us. We're all intricately connected and we're also connected with nature. This idea of separation is um, illusory. It's not, it's not true. Um, and it's, that's just beautiful. I love the way that you put that. Thank you. Thank you. And I find it fascinating um, as we're speeding up now and as we're moving into uh, the 227 um, evolution that we're going to, and we're, 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 you know, we're, we're calling in the rave children, yes. how the, the children already are integrating as a, as a um, integrated being where they're no longer uh, resonating with being masculine or feminine mm -hmm. and I actually had a client a client tell me that now um, the children are um, feeling as though they're animals and they're really connecting to animals and I had a chan um, you know I channeled in this information of this is why we have such a close connection with our pets right now because mm -hmm. we are they are taking on our consciousness 
Mm-hmm. And, and we are, we are in this sacred dance with the animals now and understanding that we are not separate from the animals. And I mean, the shamans um, have always told us this, but yeah. now we in the collective are starting to understand that, that they are just as valuable as we are. And they have a sacred role of, of carrying the torch as we ascend, as we hit higher levels, they are now taking on the consciousness and the clearing of, of the lower levels of um density wow yeah it's it's fascinating i you know i i listen to a lot of people's ideas about um what's ahead for us um i tend to think it's it's going to be a marvelous surprise it's all going to (laughs) unfold in ways we can't even imagine uh you know and i think i think what we're called to do is to just really be open open open-hearted and uh, really receive uh, one another and to, to really, really tangibly, really understand our connectedness with everything. And that, that's pretty much what you're saying. That's beautiful. I love, I love, your, I love your mind, it's really great. It's, uh, it's connecting to the heart womb, right? Like we, you know, as we're evolving, we are go- we're going to be less connected to the first three chakras. And we're going to, you know, and that's why we're, we're connecting more to our heart womb because our heart womb is um, a way of manifesting on different planes of existence as opposed to our, you know, our womb space where we manifest on the 3D. And so we are starting to connect more to our heart womb. The emotional um, way, that's how you and I started talking because uh, we, you're not defined emotionally, neither am I. So when we experience these these waves, it's, it's, it's different. And it's, you know, it's traversing and navigating something we're, we're kind of not always familiar with, but the emotional awareness is a big part of what's, what's ahead. And uh, somebody mentioned, and I, I can't remember, maybe you posted this, I don't know about how feelings and emotions are not the same thing. And, and I was really sitting this weekend in contemplation. And what I came to, to receive was that, um, it's the feelings are kind of a result of the story about the emotions. And if we can, we can question and have inquiry around the story, then we don't necessarily have to be swooped up and, and, uh, you know, turned around and upside down by the emotions when they come. Would you agree with that? Um, absolutely. Feelings are attachments that we put upon emotions. You know, emotions are literally energy in motion, but we are conditioned to react through a feeling. Mm -hmm. So we all have a sacred emotion that we connect to. But, but as I say, every single energy type experiences every single emotion. When you have that emotional awareness, you get to choose whether you're going to react Mm -hmm. and attach a feeling to it. Yes. Because that is a choice if you're going to attach a feeling to your emotions. And yes. this is something that we are learning a lot more of through emotional awareness is understanding that we do have fluctuations, but um, we get to choose whether or not we react and we um, stay in those states. That's beautiful. And it's, it's really reaction versus response. And I know this last week, I, week before we had the, I had the 1222. Oh, and I, me too. <laughs> I, I was like, all right, I'm going to, I decided to just channel it into my writing, just channel, mm-hmm. channel it, just let it flow through. And it was, it was unusual, but it was beautiful. Um, it, you know, I just didn't let my mind, I, I, I really tried to wrap it with awareness and I didn't allow my mind to create a, oh, you poor victim of the 1222 story um, because that wasn't it at all. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful wave. It's, the, it's an extremely creative wave. And I just really, I, I can say now I kind of enjoyed it, I think for the first time. 
with awareness, we get to experience it in a different way. But I also experienced the 1222 as I have the 12 as my uh, Jupiter. <laughs> and, and to me, that's my gift, right? My gift is, is my gate 12. Mm -hmm. And um, with awareness, we do get to experience it in a different way. So that's, that's, that's what evolution is all about, is that we're constantly going through the same patterns. You know, we're going through the same cycles every single year. But through awareness, you get to experience it differently your story gets to change through every single evolution and the way that you experience it really allows you to become more wise within yourself and to be able to share it with others mm. so I love that you were able to um, dance in that energetic flow which I also you know received some high highs and some low lows but also to understand that you weren't a victim of the solar transit that this was an experience and an opportunity to learn more about yourself and to learn how to use the energy as opposed to you know being a victim of it yeah i i like that i think that's i think that's really the way it, we're going to evolve to handle to handle life and um that is to take full responsibility and to be able to uh see it in terms of what can this offer me what can I learn from it? How can I channel it in a way that cre is cre creates, that makes something new? And, you know, as you were saying, um, you and I, neither of us have that emotional weight or the, you know, um, anything connecting to the emotion, to the um, solar plexus. Now the solar plexus is Piscean energy, meaning we don't have any gates in our Pisces. So that's transpersonal energy. And I understand that this may be a little bit more advanced um, for, for your listeners. I'm not sure, but that's transpersonal energy, meaning we get to play a role in someone else's karma. It's not our karma, but we get to play a role in someone else's karma, hmm. which I, I now look at that as a blessing as truly a blessing because um you know some energy is meant to flow through us and and play you know we're here to create karma and and live and clear karma within ourselves but we're also here to play a role in other people's karma and other people's experiences as well and so really understanding that has really brought new awareness to me as well it's to to kind of try to simplify it and see if i'm understanding this correctly how we respond to these energies really has a collective ripple effect in the world. That that's how I'm here. What I'm hearing to, to simplify that. And, yes. and that, that's powerful. That's a very powerful statement. <laughs> Thank you. It, it, yeah, it was. Um, and so it's interesting that when you have this awareness um, you understand that the people that are in your life at a certain time, for instance, for you and I, when we don't have any of our own personal energy within this, with the, the, this time cycle, that all the people that we're calling into, into our awareness or into our relationships, um, we get to play a role in their um, development and their evolution as well. So mm. I, I find it so fascinating during these times, um, the different types of people that we get to meet and play a role in. Yes. It's wonderful. Well, Tammy, I really, I could sit here and just listen to you <laughs> all day long, but I know you've got things to, to do and places to go. And I just want to thank you so much for coming on today. I appreciate you. I appreciate your wisdom. I appreciate what you're posting. I have learned so much in just this short period of time. And I know that our listeners are going to appreciate it as well. So I thank you so much for coming on. And um, I look forward to more interactions and uh, seeing more of what you, what you bring forth in the world. So um, with that, um, I do have one question for you. I asked this question of all my guests. If you could live at any time in history, when would that be and why? Mm. You know, my soul calls all the time to me of the of the age of the king and the queens and that, you know, even as a young child, I used to read about the queens and the chivalry, you know, the chivalry was what it was and the um, the formal attire and the formalities and the so there 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 is a calling uh, of that time frame, but of northern Europe, that's another um, you know, huge uh, 
you know, that I see all the time in my meditations and in my visions is Northern Europe in the, you know, the, the kings and the queens when they're at their highest ranking. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Tammy. I appreciate you joining us. And uh, everyone, I'm going to have her information below this video. And uh, please reach out to her. I, you won't be sorry. She's wonderful. <laughs> thank you so much, Tammy. Thank you for having me. It was very nice to meet you. Have a great day. You too.